Hello there! I unexpectedly found myself with nothing to review this weekend, so in a mad dash I consulted my list of quick picks, movies that I've seen that I'd like to talk about sometime, and I chose this one, Gaslight. Gaslight is a 1944 film directed by George Cukor that stars Ingrid Bergman and Charles Boyer and Joseph Cotton. It's a psychological thriller that focuses on a woman, Paula Alquist, played by Bergman, whose aunt, a famous opera singer, was murdered in her home when Paula was young. Years later, with the murder still unsolved, Paula reluctantly returns with her new husband to take up residence in the old house. But strange things start occurring that Paula can't explain, and she keeps forgetting appointments, or losing belongings, or changing things around the house for no explicable reason. She starts to fear that she's going out of her mind, but is she really delusional, or is her mental instability a delusion itself? The first time I saw this, I was just starting to get into old movies. I'd always liked them, I'd grown up watching them, but for some reason, I don't know why, in my teens, I started to really get into them with a vengeance. I started bringing a new batch of movies home from the library every week, and collecting actor pictures, and making lists of movies that I wanted to see. Gaslight was one of the earliest library selections. I feel like it was chosen at random, but I also seem to remember that it was one that my mom pulled off the shelf and pushed for me to rent. That's probably the case, she does have great taste. Either way, whether it was perfectly random or somewhat calculated, it turned out to be a good pick for someone who was looking to get hooked on classic movies, especially someone who likes atmospheric mysteries, especially someone who already was a fan of Alfred Hitchcock movies but was looking to branch out. It's a very handsome movie, stylishly directed by George Cukor, one of the most prominent Hollywood directors of the 30s and 40s especially. It's one of those films where each element of the creative process nicely complements the others. The lighting, the period costumes, the set design, the sound effects, the unobtrusive music, all work together to make a very fine product. Gaslight is actually a remake. I know we tend to think that remakes are a relatively recent phenomenon, just one more sign of Hollywood's lack of originality, but they're not. And the original, a British film starring Anton Walbrook and Diana Wynyard, came out just four years earlier. Both versions are adaptations of a successful 1938 play by Patrick Hamilton. Comparing the 1940 and 1944 films makes for an interesting study in filmmaking and adaptation. There are certain things that are identical, but also instances in which the execution of the plot widely varies. Thankfully, we have the freedom to compare the two, because MGM's attempts to suppress or destroy copies of the first film were unsuccessful. It's probably Hamilton and his play that deserves credit for spawning the expression gaslighting as a psychological term for the manipulation of a person into questioning his or her own sanity and perception. But the term is commonly attributed to this more prominent 1944 film, even though it was coined long after the film's release. Paula is the victim here, slowly starting to question the soundness of her memory and her mind, and for the first-time viewer, it's not readily apparent what is truth and what is manipulation. There's just enough evidence on either side to make us doubt what we see right along with her. The movie's got a splendid cast, led by Ingrid Bergman in an Oscar-winning performance as the emotionally fragile protagonist. Paula's troubled past makes her vulnerable, and her vulnerability leaves her open to suggestion and emotional abuse. There's something so pitiful about her tentative psychological state. All she really craves is love and affection and fresh air, all things her increasingly remote, impatient husband becomes less inclined to give her. Charles Boyer, as that husband, also does a great job playing against type, though I wasn't aware of that the first time I saw the movie. Boyer, up to this point in his career, had almost always played the romantic leading man, the silky and sophisticated foreign lover, and he is suave here, but he's also cold and temperamental. Seeing his performance in this movie, so different from what they'd come to expect from him, must have been kind of a shock to contemporary audiences in 1944. Of course, I have an extra soft spot for the kindly stranger in the film because he's played by one of my favorites, Joseph Cotton. 
Unlike Boyer, romantic roles were not exactly the norm for Cotton, so to see him playing the White Knight, although he's not especially romantic, has always been a delight, all the more because at the time I saw this movie, I'd only seen him play dark, menacing villains in Shadow of a Doubt and Niagara. It was really different for me to see him being a good guy, but I thought, hey, I could get used to this. This is probably one of the movies that helped solidify him as one of my favorite actors. There's also a memorable supporting role from a very young Angela Lansbury, who turns out an Oscar-nominated performance in her screen debut as Nancy the Saucy Housemaid. The character is a bit of a tart, and you're never quite sure if she's up to something or just a shade too insolent and informal with the master of the house. And there's also Dame May Witty, who provides some of the dark humor and comic relief as the bustling, inquisitive neighbor and murder mystery aficionado. It's always fun to see her name listed in the opening credits because you know you're guaranteed an enjoyable character, whether she's playing someone good, bad, or neutral. This one's definitely a classic, whether you consider it a mystery, a suspense film, a thriller, a detective story. There are multiple tense sequences, it looks great, the story is compelling, and the performances are all very good. Bergman's especially. She does an excellent job portraying this unstable character, and her performance in the last half hour or so reaches superlative levels. So I highly recommend this one. If you've never seen it, don't miss out. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'd like to do more videos like this. As I said at the beginning, I have a whole list of old movies that I would love to talk about. Um, I hope to start doing more classic movie solo reviews than I have been doing lately. It was always something that I intended to do, but I've gotten a little bit off track, so I would like to get back to doing that more regularly in between all the other stuff I do, of course. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching!